Thank you, white woman. That's just it. <laughs> <laughs> She could be from uh, the su su suburbia. Could be a black woman. That's still white. You said the suburbs. That's Thank you, white woman. That's inside white. Man, you come straight out of a car. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Straight Out of the Comic Book. I'm Will Farrell, and of course, the fellas are back. The, uh, all of these fellas are jacks of all trades. We got Young Dude, CT, and Dion Lack in the building today. How y'all doing, fellas? Man, if I was any better, I would be y'all. Hey. Less than highly favored, man. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. no. Dion, man. Dion, man, go ahead and show them. Go ahead and show them. We all going to take a sip of water. Go ahead, man. <laughs> my my, 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 my co-host. <laughs> I hate to simply eliminate bottle. <laughs> that you're disgraced. Because I know you didn't though. clean the top, and the top still got to no, have Oh, man. <laughs> We've been talking for 20 minutes. You come back and swing it already? <laughs> he said he got the lemon, you got the lemonade residue in that water. It's not residue, water. Bro. It's got the little spots at the top of the little yeah. the top of stuff. <laughs> and it got sticky. We call that a flavor burst. That's a flavor oh, burst. Flavor <laughs> burst. When you shake it like this, it's like the little top part of the cigarette. Hey, what's happening on in DC though? Though <laughs> <laughs> I love well, that you the, didn't deny it. As long as, as Dion mentioned, man, we are talking DC today, and I am very excited as well as I know CT is excited because this is his universe, and we of course we're starting in the cinematic universe. Now, um, we just received some news. That um, WB and WB Studios are putting halts on everything starring Ezra Miller, who uh, is playing the Flash in the DC Universe, after a, a arrest occurred. Um, but does anybody know exactly what he got arrested for? This particular one, no. I remember the one uh, before this, which what even was, which wasn't even a full arrest. It was him literally pushing this girl overseas down he pushed her down the video surfaced online and she was like but i love you and he was just like he was on one pushed the girl down he then later in the video tried to like apologize and i guess warner brothers swept it under the rug because this was before the filming of the flash and now that this has happened i don't know man i feel like if they could do reshoots like they probably are going to do, which is why they pushed the shit back another year. Oh, man. They got to put in um, Grant Gustin because he's the only face that we're familiar with. The reason why he was arrested was similar to that first reason. He had a, a meltdown or he was spazzing out on some some karaoke, if I'm not mistaken. He was at a bar and somebody was singing on stage or something. And I don't know what led him to snap off and kind of like go off on him. But it was another disorderly <laughs> conduct situation that he was dealing with. So it seemed like he had some anger issues or something because they also said that he was um, he wasn't the best on set. But again, with what? WB, like, you don't know. And DC Films, like, they've been having issues, disagreements on set. <laughs> but here's my thing, like, maybe it's just me. But, um, and I don't want to say it in a disrespectful way too much, but Ezra Miller was never my top choice for Flash. No. So, and like, there's nothing that I can give him like accolade wise that make me feel like he should be. No. So on top of that, and then on top of you causing problems, it's like, yeah. what are we doing? And it's, what, what, what's ahead, sad yeah. is he's such a, I've never seen him outside of these, these movies. So just to see how nice and quirky he is, like, what? It, yeah. it gives me that Will Smith feel like, it's just, it's such a shock. Like, how? How did this happen? But, you know, people, they're, they're actors. They have dark sides and they get pushed. Well, it's not even just dark sides. It's like, you got to remember, like, keyword actors, they've been acting as this character. Like, the thing with Will, without mm -hmm. going into that whole debacle, Will even said it himself. He created this character of Will Smith for the last 20 something years. So, that character made him a lot of money, made him a lot of fans, made him really well loved. But that's not who he is. He said that before his book even came out. Right. So, when you look at Ezra in these antics, it's like this is who he is. The one that you saw on screen is him acting like it's easy to act likable. Like, I am on a TV show I've been on for eight years, and the character is stupid. 
And people love stupid characters <laughs> because they're lovable. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they love people who act as if they're dumb because it's like, oh, this person isn't better than me. But the minute that you turn it off and you start correcting people's grammar and shit like that, people are like, I don't like this guy. He's a know-it-all. People so thought, people thought Cole was legit stupid. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. they loved him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing. I'm like, man, let me tell you something. Season, we did eight seasons. Around season five, I'm like, hey, man, I need to, I need something else. I, I need to talk in something else. because people. I need to turn to Stefan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need my Stefan moment because people are making me feel like I'm really dumb. And uh, you realize that I'm not that character. Like, I'm, I'm likable, but I'm not that likable guy. So what does Ezra do? That likable character might have been too much for him. So what do y'all do? If y'all if y'all had a WB, what y'all do right now? Grant. Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin. Yeah. So would y'all do like y'all did, uh, what they did when um, Heath Ledger died? It makes like he ran so fast, he turned into <laughs> Grant Gustin so he can do so much reshoot? That's I mean, ridiculous. Like, you, nah, you, 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 can keep, nah, you can keep it hella simple about it. Really like reverse flash kills him. And then messes it up. Like reverse flat flash gets him in the uh time force or uh zoom catches him and then kills they him. They were 90% done shooting. Well, here's the thing. The whole movie... Oh, it's 90%? Yes. yes. It, it, oh, CG. CG. Get somebody <laughs> and CG that face up. <laughs> what, what, what Deep fake it. Deep fake it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what they did with Paul Walker. Was... They got his brother to do his shoots. Yeah. Yeah. The we got we 10% in. Oh, yeah. Point. Yeah, the whole movie is based off of Flashpoint. So there's 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 an easy storyline that you can just bring in. I guess the issue is the ninety percent that's done because they would definitely have to do some reshoots. But as far as replacing the Flash and you know it, it, one there's there's two residuals that that can come from it because again, like I said, with Flashpoint being the base of this of the movie, it's an easy way to swap them out. But also this would be new territory. We haven't seen something where like uh you know like it seems like studios don't want to take. TV stars and turn them into movie stars. Mm -hmm. so oh, and, they, and they've, oh, not, not to cut you off, but they all actually opened that up too in uh, Crisis uh, and uh, yeah. Infinite, Earth. Infinite Earths because yep. they have the two of them pair and yep. talk to one another. So there's yeah. no reason why, how you said that could happen. And then, like you said, the epic mix of it from TV to movie and the way they set up the Flash now, they're a lot more focused on his kids and Iris. So yes, he they could step away to go uh, transcend into movies. Matter and that's fact, my thing. When I say, and I, just to say this before you say that, Geek said, when that's why I said Grant, is, I didn't say Grant just because he's the TV version. I said Grant because they had that crossover where they actually spoke. Now that opens it up in a universe, which I guarantee what was in the movie, a quick cameo, now can turn into he's our new Barry Allen because he's the one who plays Barry Allen like Barry Allen. Yeah. And I was going to say, and, and, and I, I, Will, I feel like you're up to date on The Flash with me as well. Keep me honest. Did they, did they still haven't addressed the newspaper, right? Where Flash goes missing. They haven't addressed oh, that. Oh, wow. News. That's season one. Jeez. Right. Um, no, because it altered something. It yeah, that altered. altered. Yeah. It um, they, I, think, I think that was what this recent season, the Armageddon stuff. Yeah. I think that's what that tied into. No, oh, no, no. He, yeah. Y'all are too, y'all went too far. The newspaper. From 2014 said 2024. That 2024 got moved up to 2019, I believe, and that's what the crisis was. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I did. Do, I remember them. They did deal with the paper again, and I remember yeah. they did alter and stuff like that. But yeah. Like, yeah. Because I was going to say, say that that crisis. could be the scapegoat. Like, oh, he he's missing. He's missing from the show because he's in the movies. Like they can they can do something like that. <laughs> also the kids being like, I don't like the focus. Like when I watched the true season premiere of the flash, he wasn't even in it. Like it was just his kids. And I'm like, yeah. fam, yeah, this is like, I understand you expanding the universe. This is y'all convoluting the universe. Number one, number two, I want to see the flash. I don't want to see uh, <laughs> ultraviolet. I yeah. don't want to see frost. <laughs> I want to see Cisco, but the Flash. You understand? Cisco even come back, but the only, the only one that really worked for that stood out that you didn't mind seeing continue a legacy yeah. was Green Arrow's daughter. It was like her in the way, like her step. No, and I'm and again now. Now the way I say that is, 
it's not a top tier thing of like, yo, they need to make a show, but it's like, yeah. yo, if you wanted to extend on something in that manner, you did better use an arrow and the universe they got uh -huh. rather than this one. Like, I want to see, like you said, I want to see the Flash, but we know yeah. Green Arrow is gone. So it's just like, right. I don't mind seeing the setup y'all gave us with her brother grown up, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Bulldog's daughter in there and stuff like that. There's mm -hmm. something there you could build. But with this one, it's just like, yo, what a Flash at? There is <laughs> something to build on with that because while I loved everything about the Green Arrow's daughter's universe, I hated the Green Arrow's daughter. She wasn't likable. I hate the trope that writers give women lead characters, which is, I'm a girl, so I'm super tough, and I, I can't love anybody, and everybody's against me, and I'm going to fight the world. It's like, that's not realistic to strong women, man. Strong women can be strong without you trying to force it down our throats that, ooh, I'm a girl, and you're not going to tell me what to do because I'm a girl. It's like, that's trash. Write the woman character like you do any other character, and it'll succeed. But when you try and focus on making her just like Oliver Queen, who's this guy, it didn't make sense. Like, give me her story. Give me her likability. And they never made her likable. They made her a hero trying to save her brother, but that doesn't make her likable. That just means that she's uh, family oriented. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Vegeta, but there there still wasn't that likable side to it. Like you said, you can understand Vegeta's <laughs> and you're like, I still fuck with Vegeta. I like, love Vegeta. Vegeta. Because yeah. <laughs> Vegeta had his likability with when it came for Boma, when it came for his son, even when it came for his pride of fighting, when he's like, look, bottom line, I train hard for this and you over here fucking around. I want to be the best and you over here taking naps and shit. You over here eating like, let's get back to training. Whereas a la, uh, Thea Queen, not Thea, uh, what was her damn name? I think it was Thea. I don't know what's Thea. Thea's Thea's her sister. Is you, I talk about Oliver's sister? Yeah, no, yeah. the daughter. Oh, no, no, no. Hers was something else. It was, it was with an A, I think, right? I can't remember, but the daughter, yeah. when they try to do that spinoff, I'm like, man, this is trash because nobody wants to see this. What we do want to see is what they tried to uh, pitch to us with DC's Legends of Tomorrow, where they were like, remember they showed old man Oliver yeah. and they went to the future like 20, 30 years. It's like, this is fire. Now show me everybody's kids. Now show me the city's destroyed. And then I want to get behind that. That If you show me the Flash's kids there, now I'm in. But don't show me the Flash's kids in the future running back to the past every five minutes talking about, we don't want to mess up the timeline while they're messing up the timeline. While they're messing like, up the stay timeline. the fuck put. How yeah. about that? You ever tried staying still to stop touching stuff? Man. Y'all still have failed to realize that the Flash's budget is $100 million. For they the spend, season? No. I'm talking about the movie. Oh, You're okay. talking about just reshoot it. Like, no. I spent... 60 of <laughs> I, I spent 60 million on this shoot and y'all talking about some it's cool let's just find some more money well no not even that if we're oh, saying yeah. it because yeah. the movie is like this bro this is warner brothers this isn't marvel so the fact that they're trying to punish him in any form or fashion is interesting to me because his offenses are these little bullshit stunts it's not like he got caught uh, with drugs. It's not like he got caught yeah. doing anything sexual. These are violence or him just tripping. Now, Marvel, because it's a Disney company, has a morality situation. DC can't have that big of a morality situation when <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, these you got Harley are Quinn and the Joker up here, and we know what the fuck Joker be doing to her. Exactly. The, like that, you know, like... Like that was the difference between them and Marvel. That's why they use Scott instead of Hank because Hank used to beat her, uh, used to beat up Wasp's uh, uh, mother and stuff. So they didn't want to go based off him. They went off of Scott Lang. You, we already know that's set. And then also too in the DC universe, um, we know the killing joke is coming. We know what happens oh, to yeah. Barbara in there. Which leads me to this. Which leads me to think that it was really whatever happened on set. Like this yeah. was like. The rest was the the straw that broke the camel's back, like because mm. you get you got they, like you said like they don't that moral compass may not be as high as Marvel at DC, but for the fact that they're like okay we gotta like it's like they all it's like they're they're foreseeing like all right man he he already got two things that happened while we were shooting and also on set he was an issue we this is going to be not a this is this is a toxic relationship let's go mm. ahead and sever ties mm. now and figure this out. So then this is what I want to know from, from y'all. So as Dion said, we 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 all we are hundred million dollars in. This mm -hmm. thing is almost 90% done. 
how do we end this? Let's say, for instance, they go like, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna part ways with Ezra Miller. How do y'all see this going in filling out that ten percent and then moving forward? If it is a grant, is it casting someone else? But also, let me add this: this is a very important movie in DC right. universe. It can fix everything. So or ruin it all. <laughs> it can. Because right now, DC is all over the place. Nothing really connects. It's not like little seeds here to kind of help a universe out. We don't know if we're still in the, in, in, in the uh, Snyder universe. We don't know if we're rebuilding. It's like, it's like, it's so many pieces like the, with Shazam and like Black Adam. And it's like, it's like, how y'all connect these together? And, well, I'm, and, I, and I'm scared. Because then you got the, the new Batman is a whole different universe. So it's like, what are y'all doing? Well, here's here's what I here's what I, here's what I think that they should do, and this is where I think it'll be easy because the movie's done, ninety percent. That's technically the movie's done. It's probably like they gotta wrap up the ending. I say that they wrap up the ending with you know Urza real quick, just wrap it up, but then shoot like an additional 10, 15 minutes, like make sure that the the ending with Urza is opening up the the reasoning why he's no longer the Flash. And in that last 10, 15 minutes that they shoot is introducing, like since we're going with Grant, introducing why Grant is the new Flash in this universe. So that way they don't waste what they've already shot. They don't lose that 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 uh, that money, but then they kind of get they they usher in this. Cause right now, like I said, there's there's no rules for this for them. They have nothing because <laughs> technically this is supposed to be resetting everything. So in this movie, they can legit take that liberty of saying, okay, you're going to get 90 minutes of this, you know, of this, of Urza Miller and Flashpoint. But it's then, definitely Ezra. I don't want you misquoting yourself. I know but I said Urza, Ezra. Ezra Miller and Flashpoint. And then this, this, this 10, 15 minutes that's also in is going to explain why he's no longer the Flash. He gets lost into the speed force or whatever happens. And Grant has to take over the man. Yeah, here's the, the thing. One, I'm glad I told you Ezra because I was like Ursula would be a little more famous, but, <laughs> but <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> but I don't want them to switch him out to say he died in the Speed Force or he disappeared. I don't want that. I want them to respect us as fans and as audience members enough of our intelligence to just be like, you know what? We got three options here. We can finish this movie as is and drop it, give it to the people. And hopefully in two or three years, he's been living the straight and narrow. We could do more projects with him Two, We bring in grant as our new flash moving forward because this is another universe's tale. And we've already established the multiverse and the fact that this is flashpoint, which universe we're in. And number three to say, you know what guys, we're always very impulsive when it comes to these moves. We got rid of Snyder. <laughs> we getting rid of it. Like, I'm so tired of the impulsive decisions of Warner Brothers. They start tripping off Ben Affleck because this movie didn't make any money. So yep. now you can't be Batman. Now they're tripping off Ezra Miller. It's like, listen, drop the movie. Because <laughs> if you do anything to this film in a, in a negative way, it's going to destroy the storytelling you're trying to do and set you back even further. Yeah. Yeah. Or they can rodeo it. They can just... Switch it without even telling. They did that with Rhodey and 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 Iron Man, and yeah, we acknowledge it, but it didn't it didn't slow up progress at all. Nobody was like, "Oh, I'm not watching in Marvel." But they didn't already shoot ninety percent. Yeah, they didn't shoot ninety percent of it though. (laughs) And (laughs) whose money are they gonna use, man? You gotta tell all these actors who moved on on other projects. To come back, shave your mustache, grow your hair back out, new wigs. You know what I'm no, saying? No, 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 no. I meant, I meant Rhodey it for the next movie. Like, like. No, no, no. no. Yeah. He's talking about the Flash, though. So, like, if they had anything in there, like people playing Batman, like Michael Keaton, like Michael Keaton may have to come back and don the suit again. But like he said, he may be filming something because you know he may be back at Marvel filming his uh, Vulture yeah. scenes and stuff like that. So him so saying I'm he has not, to come I, back. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying drop the movie as it is. And then when they do whatever next movie, they don't even <laughs> acknowledge why there's a new Flash. Like, they didn't do that in Iron Man and Iron Man 2. They can just do that. Drop this movie as it is, and then the next movie, continue with the story with the new Flash. Better example, because that could be problematic. Better example would be how they did the Incredible Hulk film with uh, oh. Edward Norton yep. and then Avengers with Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo. So if anything, drop this Flash movie as is, and then moving forward, we got 
another Flash actor or when you do, because you're not probably going to do another solo Flash movie if you get rid of Ezra. So then just do your Justice League movies with Grant Gustin. Hold on. Yeah, yeah I know he still has to shoot the rest of the film, though. Who, <laughs> with the Ezra? allegations. Yes. Right. Like, but, hey, I mean, man. I- Crazy! Like, they, they only said they put a halt on his future projects. They yeah, say future projects. Really, like, flash they say current. Yeah, so they 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 okay. may let him finish, but but I think too like they they have to figure something out of DC because one thing I realize they don't have that could connect all of this and make it make sense with everything they're doing. They don't have a Deadpool yet, and like you have that edge of Deadpool who breaks the fourth wall so much that he could bring everything together. Marvel doesn't technically need that, but he had they have the potential to be able to do that. So it's just kind of like you need a whole bunch, you need different elements to bring in. Because like we said in the uh, in the previous episodes, we how many Batmans we at right now? So what seven that are currently playing Batman? Currently playing? That's hilarious. Currently playing. <laughs> ben Affleck, well, Michael Keaton, um, uh, Robert Pattinson. Uh, 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 old boy from Titans. Because that Batman. You count Batman, that. Again, but again, if you bring it in Grant Austin, you're Augusta. opening up the window to, to we messing up everybody and the rest Grant. of this stuff. Grant Austin opens up a whole bunch of doors now. Who is Grant Austin? What's his name? I'm not saying what's, what's that name? Grant Austin is the greatest porn actor of the golden age. <laughs> Grant Austin, Grant Austin ain't letting y'all take him out the movie. Like he's like Grant Austin, right? right? What's his name? Gustin. Grant Gustin. I'm about to look up Grant Gustin now. Who is this guy? I don't like that. What's his name again? Gustin. You know what's funny? Grant Gustin's name does sound like he would be an incredible Green Lantern. Just like off name value alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grant Gustin. Wow. To, to, To Will's point, that's why I always said they need to introduce Lobo. Lobo is pretty much like DC. Like he's the wise cracking, fourth wall breaking, you know what I'm saying? Like ragtag person who's who's an anti-hero, but he's also, you know, but he's like, he's really out for himself. Like he just, like Lobo is such a dope dynamic character that he would be, he would bring that, that craziness that Deadpool brings to Marvel. Stronger too. Superman too. So, oh, that brings me to this. Everybody's always hating on Superman and a Superman game. How would you do a Superman game? And I always say, start him off with uh, an ailment, right? Like he's been affected by kryptonite or mm-hmm. the red sun has been around the planet he got to go to the pockets where he can use his powers you remember the story from justice league uh unlimited where superman seemingly got killed but he was really transported to the future and in that future his beard grew out he had he had no powers he had to fight wolves and he turned the wolf skin into blankets and shit like that give us that superman story with vandal savage and vandal savage has to help him get home that could be the game in a nutshell, first first half of the game. Then the second half of the game could be Superman in his glory back in his present time, affected by the yellow sun. That way you get two versions. I'm too good, man. People, I'm man, these companies, good, bro. I, I, still don't, I still don't even see, though, why you can't have a regular Superman game. Like, you, because, again, too, it's just like you can give, like, Lex Luger could uh, have like you said, like even bringing Vandal Savage, partnered up with Vandal Savage, and now they've made an entire kryptonite armory and stuff Ooh. like that. And this can be made by, and you know, you can use one of the uh, magical people too to make this. And so now the punk, like the regular punks got these kryptonite bullets for them. So it's like, yeah. yo, you got to worry about getting shot, your health yeah. dropping and everything like that. Even with flight, it's like, yo, you can only fly so much to be able to fight. Mm-hmm. Like if it was a city of, city of kryptonite, <laughs> Like like he they had like a whole bunch of sand that was kind of like sprinkled around the world, so he yep. wasn't as fully strong. Cause it was like just not not enough to to hurt him, but just like I make make him normal, but still. Yeah, strong. yeah. Why well, hasn't nobody did that? That's actually a smart idea. If exactly. I'm villain, if I'm a villain, I'm breaking. Like my floor is not concrete, it's not carpet, it's sand filled kryptonite. <laughs> Superman's never coming. He's never going to reach me. But, I mean, he, he's still strong, but he is not his strongest because it's not it's, it's just like sprinkled, like dust yeah. part of it. Of it. Um, but also, it'd be dope to see like if I shoot at him, he still has his speed so he can slowly move. You see, like the little like the dot, like, like the, the dodging thing in like Batman Arkham. Right. Like you can, he can, he can hit. So, you yeah. see his 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 power start going down. 
That's the thing. You make the Superman game almost exactly like the Arkham series. I mean, Spider-Man did it. Ain't nobody talking about it. Spider-Man is the Arkham series. Yeah, matter of fact, that's even better reference than the Batman thing. Like you said with the bullets, Dion, like you, he can sit, it'll slow down and that's like a Spidey sense. So that helps him Mm -hmm. like when they about to shoot him in the Spider-Man game. Yeah, yeah. I'm bad. That's, that's, I, I, that's how I felt about the the uh, the Matrix game. This one came out a long time ago. Um, slept on game. Slept on game. Yes. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, uh, I, I hated. I mean, they played with Jada Pickett in the, in the little Chinese yep. man. Mm-hmm. I, I can't think his name. <laughs> the uh, little cool. Chinese <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people don't know though. That's that's actual canon though in the movies for the yeah. fourth one. Okay. Yeah, so oh. Morpheus, like, and Morpheus dying mm-hmm. in the video game, that's why we have the new dude, because he actually was killed in the video oh. game. Oh. And they follow off of that. That's why Neo is in the spot that he's in now. You have to play the video game to understand, like, that's why old boy is playing Morpheus now. They Maybe that's the why it failed, because they expected everybody <laughs> to have played the video game instead of giving us some fresh storytelling and give us Lawrence Fishburne. I had somebody break down the the Matrix Four movie, and they, what they tried to accomplish was mwah, but it was it's it's not great yeah. for normal eye people. Yeah, they what they tried like to do the is algorithm it. of the internet. They made it feel like that, and how you kind of be addicted, all that stuff. It's, it's it, I send it to y'all, but it's a dope little breakdown of how they tried to to make it feel like like the the original Matrix was was ahead of its time, but now this Matrix is studying us as people mm-hmm. and, and kind of manipulating us mm-hmm. to, to think certain ways. It, it's, it's a dope little analogy, but it, it's so hard to, to, to watch as a naked eye person. To get us back on track, the, I, I, did, did, any of you guys, did any of you guys do the Matrix demo, the game for the, uh, the, for the new one on the Unreal Engine? Demo? Because there was a demo that came out probably like around New Year's. Um, and um, it was on, it was on the, the next gen sy- uh, systems. But that mechanics is definitely outfit for how a Superman game would go. Because you got to think, as as Neo, uh, as the one, because you play as Neo in it, as the one, um, you are overly powered. You're pretty much Superman. You have super, yeah, you have this strength. You can fly, you can, like, and stuff like that. And the way that that mechanics work in that, um, in that, uh, in that demo definitely can outfit exactly what CT was saying about a Superman game, where mm. you you're still in this world. You you are Superman. You are overpowered, but you still have things that you have to do and things that you can't do still within that world. So, yeah. and, and so it's the fact always, that we don't have it, go ahead, Will. And he can always gain his powers too before you. Yeah. Know, like like he don't have to start off with everything. Like he no. can have flight, super strength, and you know like he can die. See, but it's like yo, let us build to the, let's build to the super speed. Let us build the strength to go up. The laser eyes, the ice breath. It's like yo, like we can build up to that. Ooh, Ooh, like amnesia, that. that'd be dope. If he was just like a strong dude, didn't know how to use his powers, like something happened to him that he's kind of like, like, like remember how uh, in Smallville when he had to slowly develop his powers, yeah. he's not realize what he can do, and like mm-hmm. you kind of started to kind of see things kind of like like blurry, like why do I see through people? He's kind of like figuring it out. So but that's imagine- that's literally like an origin. Like if I'm also for that game, like I'm for the game of Superman as he's becoming Superman. I'm not opposed to that, but yeah. at the same time, give us something. We yeah. still ain't got a Flash game. We ain't got no Superman game. Oh, All yeah. we've gotten are these Batman games. And it's like, bro, there are so many other people in the universe. That's my biggest thing against Warner Brothers. It's, it's not a lot of speedster games, though, besides Sonic. Like, what is, yeah, what is this? Just, there was a Speedy Gonzalez game on Super Nintendo back in the day that that <laughs> that I li- that I stand on. Like that Speedy Gonzalez game was was classic to me. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that, man. Unless it's like a you know first person running game. No, not it's really. Not. No, not really. Because it's like even the mechanics of you running fast, you can treat it kind of like how God of War is when you're fighting the monsters. It's like you have to press the button, or like how Spider Man when he's like when he's uh trying to run and he shoots his webs, you have to press the right buttons in order for him to do it. Yeah. It can be the same thing for the Flash when he's dodging and ducking people. Even with a fight, like when he starts to do his electricity and you about to hurl it, you can yeah. use the analog to try to wind it up and make sure you throw it right. There's a mm-hmm. whole bunch of ways you could play as the Flash, especially with the mechanics we got now. Oh, yeah. The problem isn't the problem isn't there's not a way to do it. The problem is Warner Bros is not green lighting it because i guarantee you we're not the first fans of the flash and superman to pitch video games 
Yeah. It's just one of us be like, no, other theaters in interest because they don't know their properties. Yeah. They just know what they think makes money, which is what has already made money. And that's the problem with an executive not being able to progress is you're thinking about what used to make money instead of what can make money. Mm-hmm. What is the and most successful thing of Warner Brothers have done? Because they have been falling, they have been dropping the ball for the past 10 years. Matrix is probably their biggest thing that it was a success. Uh, success. And the last thing that was a major... <laughs> We starting off. We starting off, <laughs> bro. Because y'all be saying some slick shit. Like, don't nobody hear what Dion will I'm say. Never success. Stop. I am never going to stop saying success. you are too successful to I not be able never, to pronounce it properly. I'm always going to say success. I oh, can't. I'm country, so that's why I'm going to definitely fuck up all kind of words. He says so. success. But, uh, uh, if we're talking recently, I mean. Yeah. Doesn't wear one Warner Brothers own Harry Potter, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a most yeah, successful yeah, yeah. movie. The Death of that's, Hallows. That's, that that franchise is um, but big. second is crazy enough, Aquaman is number two. Really? Um, yeah, followed by the Dark Knight Rises and then Joker, uh, and then the Hobbits, uh oh, the yeah. Unexpected Journey, the Dark Knight, uh Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Hobbit, Harry Potter, and then uh, The Hobbit. Those are their top 10 most successful films. And that's why they keep rebooting them up. That's why they keep yeah. coming back. <laughs> yep. They got a new Hobbit movie coming out. Yep. But they are, yeah, and they treat Matt and Harry Potter just like they're doing Batman because you got the Fantastic Beasts, now the Secrets of Dumbledore, the uh, the movie that the show that they finna bring on HBO Max about Harry Potter's son. Like, like you said, they just keep expanding yeah. those universes. But that's Great. the thing when you look at when you look at Warner Brothers and you see Aquaman on that list. Aquaman was a brand new property as far as they took a chance and it made money. So continue to do that and more films will make money like they're doing Blue Beetle. I hope that they do it properly because here's the thing. I'll tell you, the only thing that's going to make that movie work is if the guy because they got the guy from uh, Cobra Kai. If the kid from Cobra Kai gets his body together, that movie is going to be fire. If he go in there with that same Cobra Kai body, season three. Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay, uh-uh. You, you know, know I'm not lying. When you look you at Cobra are, Kai, no, 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 season, no, no, you, you, you are all yeah, facts yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what the That's main why. character, right? <laughs> yeah. Your back, your back b- broke for a reason. That's why. <laughs> Do we know <laughs> if it, does DC give uh give their actors the Marvel treatment? Like you know, once you get the Marvel deal, they give you the fitness trainer, they give you the chef, they give you all that, so you can be ready and physically fit. Does DC do the same thing? Yeah, that's why Ben Affleck uh couldn't wait to be done with Batman just because of like the physical training. Ah, okay. to do the but when you look at uh Zachary Levy, Zachary Levy was already a tall dude and he still had to wear that muscle suit claiming that he wasn't a muscle suit. It's like motherfucker, we know what muscle suits look like. <laughs> right. I'm like, so, so you don't look like that. This is not how you look, but The Rock did it on his like these. They're getting people who already work out already, instead of yeah. people they got to transform. Oh, so yeah. I had this conversation the other day when you're in wrestling, like you know, we watch WWE and WWE, you can't take steroids because it's like, yo, performance enhancers, even though this is all scripted and choreographed with movies, you don't have to deal with the sports stuff, so you can literally be roided up. So it's like, really? why aren't you not yeah. yoked up? Because you're not, because you're not really? physically, because you're not physically touching nobody. Like, again, right. like you're not, you're not putting a strain on anyone else. Most of your stuff, you just for the look of it, not yeah. the physical aspect of it. Like you got stunt people for that, so yeah. you can have a rock looking jack like this. He might could lift up a whole set, but they're not gonna have him do that. They're gonna have his cousin do it. Well, yeah. let's, let's talk about the cons of stero- uh, steroids. That's- for the people who don't know, there are only uh, two kinds the way I see it. Your heart might explode and your penis might get extremely small. Bingo. Now, here's the thing. For millions of dollars, you might gamble on the on the smaller of the penis, but you don't want your heart to explode. Uh, and you don't you know, take this, a small dick for three months. You know, this Hollywood. Who wants, so... who wants the opposite? Who wants the opposite? Like, I prefer the exploding heart. In the, comments, going in, the heart the, in the comments below, say if you rather have an exploding heart or a small penis. <laughs> Which one do you prefer, ladies and gentlemen? Like one of them roids, man. Exploding heart or small poll. penis? <laughs> that, is a, that is a I, horrible poll. <laughs> I know it's I know it's banned in sports, but I think everyone should do stero- steroids. Like hey. this. Just a I'm sprinkle of it. I'm going to say baseball was better when they did steroids. Yes. Okay. Okay. It was a good time. Yo, hear me out. Hear me <laughs> out. Here we go. This is why I agree with Dion like, on why them roids should be legal. Mm-hmm. Because once they do that, 
them cyber enhancements get to come in. Mm. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see these dudes do some unbelievable shit on these fields. I'm talking <laughs> about kicking the ball out the whole arena. And you on mute league. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. Mutant if, league? If, you on mutant if, league. Yeah, I can't out, wait. If they came out with guarantee, if they I broke got. apart like the, the if they broke apart of steroid leagues, when you see niggas like whole arm going to the ring, like oh, yeah. what? Everything yeah. will be switched over. Like, yeah, I want to go to the mutant league. I want to go to the like what? this nigga dunked his body. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so question: If they came out with you can get enhancements, would y'all go? Would would y'all would y'all sign up to get enhanced? I'm yeah. not an athlete. I mean, are you talking about athlete or just regular? Like if just you know, right like, now, right now, Tesla comes out and say, "Look, we got Tesla enhancements. You can have you can get <laughs> a, a bionic knee that make you run faster. You can get you know like like whatever like you whatever you can get that enhancement. Will you would you guys sign up for an enhancement? Like a Robocock? Yeah, <laughs> whatever you can think of, whatever you can think of. That's the only thing I think you, about. You ain't gonna gyrate. You be like this. You be like, yo, let's do it on his own. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like, it, 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 it has to be robotic though it has to be a robotic would you enhance <laughs> i'll oh, be honest with you man i'm pretty happy with my body <laughs> but uh, you know what i'm pretty happy with my body however i wouldn't get the first model much like the iphone right <laughs> i didn't get an iphone until the iphone 5 yeah, I didn't get an iPhone to the iPhone 5. So I wouldn't get robotics until they got to the fifth one to where they worked out yeah. all the case. Yeah. <laughs> I need I need Tesla 8, like the whatever yeah. company that is. Making I, I'll, them, get a, get I'll, I'll get a Tesla torso. Are oh, you tripping? Torso. You fucking up your whole operation. I don't, just, I don't know what it is. Torso? <laughs> torso. Wait, why just the torso? <laughs> I mean, that's the most important part of your body. Your core. You tripping. <laughs> I feel like you putting a. I feel like you putting a lot of your life on the line for Tesla. Facts. Because what happened if it shut off and don't update? Ooh. <laughs> your Wi-Fi <laughs> trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then my legs just be like this. My- <laughs> glitching in real life, dog. No, glitching in real life is yeah. crazy. Yeah, this, and your torso though. That's like you said. That shit was your base. That's holding you up. Like that's yeah. it. Like arm. I could just. Oh well, then that's it right there. Uh, and they call customer service, but yeah. you know, with the other hand, yeah, torso. Yeah, I would rap. know. I would know it is a problem, like a check engine light. Oh, you got twenty five miles to the to the to the empty on your liver. Well, let me let me go ahead and update this. <laughs> you know what's funny? You're thinking of manual shit <laughs> as opposed to as opposed to internet shit. We don't know when our internet is going to cut off. They don't give us a light for that. It just cuts off. Yeah, so your off. body. It's just gonna cut off. It's not gonna be no warning sign. Everybody will want a warning sign, right? <laughs> See, if I got any kind of enhancements, it'd be just some. It'd be just being lazy. I'd just be like, "Yo, I want something inside of me, nano wise, that just keep me in shape." Ah. I ain't work out. Or when I go work out, it's amplified. You know, I got superheroes be like, do twenty pumps, and then they just got these muscles. That's what yeah. I want. When when I nano technology reps, will be fire though. Yes, yeah, I go nano? do two reps. It's like, oh shit. That's what I want. That's the yeah. idea. <laughs> Nanotechnology, if you can have nano nanites in your body and they would eat all of your excess fat, oh, oh. damn. Now we're talking. Sadia. I don't say all. Let's, let's say about 75%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to keep a little body fat. Let me lay it. You want to keep, keep some keep body fat? fat. <laughs> I want a little body fat. Just, 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 just. Let me yeah, tell you I something. Like, I looked at my phone last night and I saw a picture of me in 2007 and I say, oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> So I wanted to take all of it. <laughs> but also how quickly, because your skin gonna be like, hey, hey, slow the fuck down. <laughs> oh, that's what that's what the nanites for. The nanites take care of all of that. They take care of all of that. <laughs> your skin gonna be looking like a t-shirt. I'm like, oh shit, I got <laughs> You gotta be, you gotta be able to control it like brick breaker. Like you, like you see your body and you get to control how much body fat gets. In it. Like it gotta have some type of control panel. Yeah. They can have it. You get it easy. Yeah. <laughs> get it all it. you can eat, fam. Get it put all. That to, put that towards the app. I'll program it right from there. Be like, yep, this is what we doing. If, if somebody right. told you that, if somebody told you, say, hey, listen, I can, I know all you guys are struggling with your weight. How about I will take away all your fat? The only problem is you got to wear long sleeves. You got to wear pants all the time because your skin is going to be very droopy. Would you be like, 
Oh yeah. my God, it's gonna be droopy. What? I oh mean, it's, it's gonna be like you lost me at like, droopy. Right? You I don't use a different that. word. <laughs> like you, all you gotta do is wear tight, tight suits. Like, who that nigga ripped? No, no, no. I thought you were gonna say, "I'll make you a deal. I'll take away all your body fat, and you be ripped." Except you can only wear long sleeves and pants everywhere. Then I'm like, "All right." I mean, if I'm going places, great. Yeah. When I'm around this crib, you know, box. Yeah, baby. I don't want to look yeah. like fat bastard after the subway died. I don't want a vagina. <laughs> Nick. That's I crazy. Want, I, you, you, I mean, you, you you got the the they, that nigga ripped. Like, Shake off your shirt. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> and then I get and then the thing I get hot. I get hot. Yeah, I, I don't know hot, when I lose man. weight. I get hot. Like just because just looking at me in long sleeves, I'm gonna get hot. And then want to do this and the rest of my skin doing that too. It's like, right. uh. <laughs> bro. I saw a picture oh. earlier today of a girl that I went to elementary school with, and I didn't realize she had gained so much weight. So she showed a before and after picture. The before picture, she was like. 300 plus pounds and in the after picture she had got the sleeve and she was um very small like she's like 150 pounds or something like that i'm very happy for her. she looks amazing and she truly does look great but you don't see a lot of those success stories man you see some people lose that weight and they got so much skin yeah you'd be like are you in a costume right now look at that sexy nigga right there Hey, Dion Lack with the <laughs> I'm at the mechanic. Let me take a picture of my cell phone here. That picture. Oh, do I send in for the next Tyler Perry film that I'm yeah. using? Getting the oil change. Come uh, take this picture. I definitely be going to church every Sunday. I'll meet you. your granddaughter. I'll take it to the Betty Fast Ball. To the sock up. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> but all right, fellas. But before we close out, man, I just I just want to know from y'all like we haven't talked about DC. We're gonna talk about DC uh, some more in another episode as well. But I just want to know from sure. y'all um, outside of the Ezra Miller thing because um, I do believe like how, how how y'all said. I think that they will finish that and will be okay. I don't think that's gonna affect Flashpoint. But as far as what DC is setting them, how it is now, how how do y'all see this going? Or how, matter of fact, not how do you see it going? How do you want DC to go? We see what Marvel's doing. We see how they're moving into the, you know the, the supernatural realm, moving away from the full Avengers type set movie and just going with everybody. How do you feel DC needs to be able to come so they can continue combating with Marvel? For me, I think DC should just focus on independent runs, like. Think about uh, out of the last few movies that we got, like we enjoyed the Joker and that's not connected. We enjoyed this last Batman uh, film and it's not necessarily connected. And we, we, we in our last episode, we, uh, we talked, we said, we hope they, they, they don't try to connect it just for the point of trying to create a universe. I think that Marvel has created that blueprint of that connected universe via movies and and no matter what DC does, if they try to mirror that that format or they try to compete on that realm, it's always going to look like they was late to the ball game. So I feel like if they just focus on independent runs and just focus on that, I think that I I rather that than them trying to reboot another universe or restart another universe or figure out because I feel like they don't have a uh, un, un, until they prove it until they prove otherwise they don't have uh, one captain steering the ship. And until they get that, I feel like it's going to always be chaotic. So I'd rather they focus on independent runs and go and give us stories like that. Uh, again, I'm nervous. I'm looking at the upcoming films that they got coming out. I'm with you, uh, Deuce. <clears throat> Just focus on the individual ones. And then once you start to kind of get the ball rolling, uh, you know, come back again. I hate that they're trying to keep the same template of, of Marvel. They're trying they, they like, like, the fact they were like they were like seven years behind Marvel, and they thought that two films in you can kind of create a Justice League <laughs> immediately. It's like, dude, what are y'all doing? We don't even know three of these characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gonna give us an origin story with them and a team up? Um, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at their their upcoming films. They got the Flash, Black Adam, um, Shazam two. Aquaman 2, um, Wonder Woman 3, uh, The New Gods. Uh, I don't know what DC uh, League of Super Pets is. I don't know what it is. It's a cartoon show. That's a cartoon, cartoon show. show. It got Kevin Hart and The Rock in it. Yeah. The fact that no Man of Steel 2 has been greenlit yet. Bro, and we, we don't have a, Wonder they don't Woman. Have a Superman. 
And so, here's That's the a, thing. Like, you got somebody who said that I'll play Superman as long as y'all let me. And they won't even let him. And they won't even let him. <laughs> so like, I'm going to say extremely since Christopher Reeves. Yeah. Now, this is what I want to go against Geek Set a little bit. We need to have things connected because as a DC fan, you know, we've been watching these movies for 30 plus years and nothing's been connected. I've yeah. seen how that's gone. As bad as Justice League was, not the Snyder Cut, but the Justice League theatrical cut, as bad as that was, it at least gave us some connectivity and we were able to see these characters have their own solo films. Right. But we need someone to be, we needed Snyder. If you liked him or hated him, we needed him because his vision was what we got. It's like, all right, this is what I want to see, but this is what I want to see that. <laughs> DC is like, all right, go for it. So we need one voice for these films with one story because that will take us to the next level. All of these random movies that aren't connected are great to see, but it's just a quick thing. It's like, um, it's like junk food. You still need your vegetables. You know what I'm saying? So don't give me Taco Bell every day. Give me some um, some mashed potatoes and greens so I can be able to be like, okay, now this is a well-balanced situation. More vegetables, less starch on the bread side. So we need one voice. We need all of the characters that we haven't seen get films and then connect the Justice League that way. We shouldn't see a second Justice League until we've seen a Green Lantern movie, a true Flash movie, another Superman movie, and then we get a chance to see Blue Beetle and we get a chance to even see goddamn Mr. Terrific, as crazy as that sounds. Like, I want to see the characters that were on this goddamn cartoon Justice League. And then while I'm on the subject, if Dwayne McDuffie wouldn't die, we wouldn't even be in this fucking mess right now. Dwayne McDuffie is the person who created the animated Justice League uh, cartoon show and Justice League Unlimited, and he gave us Static Shock. Yep. That's when we were all like, oh, my God, yeah. WB is really doing great. And that brother died uh, way too soon. And, yeah. um, you know, all we got is Bruce Tim, and Bruce Tim is not trying to do <laughs> what he did 20 years ago. So DC have a uh, Kevin Feige? Was it too many heads over there, huh? That's what we're saying. It's too many. Is there are yeah, too many cooks? And it's not really ran by DC. It's ran by Warner Brothers. So it's like yeah. DC is just letting them kind of do whatever they feel like doing, and they're just allowing them to have their IPs. Unlike a Kevin Feige who is running that portion of Marvel mm-hmm. and working with Disney to produce it out for distribution. So yeah. that's the thing. You don't have, like he said, you don't have nobody that is a true fan. They're trying to like make those come to life. They're Warner Brothers who aren't really only really concerned about, you know, of course, the bag and you can't be mad at them for it because, of course, that's what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. They're going with what they know. But yeah. I also agree with uh, CT. I-, I agree with both of y'all. Um, and in the way to mesh all of that into it, it's like I do like the independent side because just like how Marvel, you're kind of giving us this, the, the, the thing of like a multiverse if you decide you want to do that because you have crisis uh, as well. So you can always tie that. But mm-hmm. what I think they're missing is like how you said – a constant world. We don't have like a legit, like, I don't forget the earth that we have for DC, but like an earth 35. So it's just mm-hmm. like, who really gave that away for me to where they can shape it is Peacemaker. Mm. I loved how Peacemaker referred to everyone, even small characters. They was like, he was like, who's Matter Might Man? Be like, yo, I saw him eat a whole Wendy's restaurant once. It's like, yo, you were referring. <laughs> like, yeah. Who is like, who is Batmite? It's like, Batmite is like an interdimensional dude who's a huge fan of Batman. That uses like fifth dimensional right. weapons we can't even like put in like process in our head. It's like, yo, the fact he's mentioning all of these people, doll man, all yeah. these folks, it's like, yo, give give us that world in different movies. Like, let us know that they know about these other people, that they know about Central City, Coast City. And so when you give us like who the Flash is, who the Batman is for that world, you're starting to shape that already. And then now we understand, okay, this world, this this Joker, like with Joaquin Phoenix or um, the Matt Reeves Batman don't connect with this one. This is just y'all take on something else. You ready for this? I'll, I'll even go so far as to say, I wouldn't be opposed to James Gunn being our new Snyder for the for DC because at least James Gunn he's the one who brought you these references and Batmite and yeah, the Peacemaker right. in general. So give us him leading the helm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what what did Kevin Feige say that Marvel entrusted him with it? Because you got to think in order to to build a world like that, you have to sell them on the universe. Now, obviously. 
like DC can see Marvel success and like you can base it off of that. But like to say this is the 20 year plan. This is the skeleton of the 20 year plan. And we're going to build out and everything's going to lead up into this big moment. Like, I wonder what did Kevin tell Marvel? It didn't take much because you got to think you're thinking about Kevin Feige. Now you're thinking about Marvel. Now when Kevin Feige came on, first of all, Kevin Feige was there when they were doing Tobey Maguire's uh, Mm Spider-Man. So Kevin Feige, when Marvel studios was starting up, they weren't even respected. They were just trying to get off the ground. So him even going in there saying, hey, guys, I got a plan for the next uh, five movies. They were probably like, oh, my God. All right. Well, we'll give it a shot. And after the success of Iron Man, bam, to the moon. And he hired the best of the best comic book nerds that Mm -hmm. understands the universe. And he and those nerds, the the comic book heads, people that knew the universe, gave those to the writers to create a world. And it, but with DC, they'd be like, we need writers. They're like, damn right. the universe. They'd be like, let's just get some writers. But I, but I know comic books. We need writers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Kevin Feige did it with Iron Man. Like Iron Man is what really sold it. It was like you have this guy, Robert Downey Jr., who is basically Iron Man. And, you know, like from the comic, it's like, yo, that's Iron Man if it was real life. And then um, <clears throat> who's the guy that plays Happy? I would say his last Oh, you're Don talking Don. about John Favreau, the legend. Yeah. 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 So you have kept like, so Kevin got him also behind it because it's like, yo, I want to help make this. I, I'm down too. It's like, yo, that What's guy it? is a tr- true comic book head. So it's just like, yo. Also- this would be a great what, film. What John Favreau did also as well, it's like he took what Kevin Feige did with Marvel and said, all right, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to do that with Star Wars because Mando, like everything that we've been getting from Star Wars and how this universe, he's been leading it. He's, he's been one of the brainchilds of like, let's expand this universe. And we've been getting some great non-Force related stories from him, from Star Wars lately, that the that the Star Wars community is like, finally, we finally expanding this universe outside, you know, uh, um, of the main cast, and so it's like, again, like it, it's 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 been proven that if you can get one person to at least be the head, and then still allow directors to do their creative input, but like this is the storyline, so you can create this movie of this property, but it has to be able to relate to this in this way or whatever. If Favreau could, if if DC could get Favreau, all of our problems would be solved because Favreau is more powerful, if not just as powerful of a mind as Kevin Feige, yeah. because we still had Kevin Feige for Iron Man 3. You know who we didn't have? John Favreau behind the scenes of that. They had yeah. Shane Black, and that movie was the worst of the trilogy. Yes, it was. Oh boy. Let me ask you this. Uh, in, in Eternals, um, the little boy had referenced Superman. So is Superman a fictional character or a real thing? And if that's the case, could there be a crossover? Uh, you, you I know that's crazy that to think about. I know that's crazy to think about. There's a comic book, but all I'm saying is like, is it a is it a TV reference? They say, hey, are you like a Superman? Or oh, he said, no, that's no, that's Superman. And then him going, I don't wear a cape, that clarifies that you're talking about that one. The only problem about it is. I don't see Marvel continuing to test that. Like DC does it with everybody. Like even watching one of the again, watching the animated thing, they mentioned True Blood from HBO. Mm-hmm. So it's like they reference, they keep everything referenced in there. I don't see them doing it. One, because theirs is not based on our actual universe, like where mm-hmm. we're in. So they haven't brought that to reality. Like right now they're in 2025, all that stuff. So they've never referenced anything that we know. And yeah. stuff, but DC does do that. So it's yeah. like, I don't see them moving that on unless Deadpool does it. That's the only one I can see them doing something like that and getting away from it because they did the Green Lantern thing um, at the end credits. That's the only way I can All see right. them doing something like that. But uh, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, I want to thank my, uh, not once again, because I didn't say it the first time. I want to thank my guest for being here. CT and Young do some geek say. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, wrap up this episode. But we are gonna be coming back with more DC talk. As we said, uh, you already know what to leave in the comments below. If you own them roids, explode <laughs> the heart a little bit. Which one are you going explode with? The 
sorry, just a little bit. I'm like, oh, what was just that? A little bit. Just a little tremor. <laughs> just a little tremor. <laughs> <What is that? laughs> Which one you going with? But I want. Uh, but as always, I like uh, for my guests to shout out. Uh, make sure that you following them and what they got coming up. I'm gonna start with Deuce, CT, and of course, it would be our lack. And then we go ahead. And close I'm gonna take my shirt off. <laughs> First right, of all. Yeah, Oh, your birthday one, I still do not know how fast you, like, how did he take all that off that damn fast? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, he's magic. <laughs> yeah. he's, the super, he's the superhero. We talk, we talking about superheroes straight yeah. out of comedy. We need, to, we need to do an episode on Dion Lack. Like, who is really <laughs> Dion Lack? What's his secret identity? <laughs> he's phenomenal. But Dion Lack, his superpower is truly comedy, bro. There's nobody... You're not going to find anybody funnier, bro. Like, these are just on, facts. Man. You're going to see on, people bro. that are going to make you laugh. But mm-hmm. nobody on this planet is funnier than Dion Lack. Naturally. Man. Also, uh, I believe that he uh, is might be an eternal, as he brought up. <laughs> I seen Dion Lack in a commercial from 1989, and he still looks the exact <laughs> fucking same. This man is not aged at all. Dion <laughs> Lack, man. He my vegetables, man. You know, no. It's the and- point. <laughs> And the water eliminate residue. (laughs) 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 But Deuce, you got the feel, man. Let us know what's up. All right. Well, first thing first, as always, man, thank you for having me, man. I truly truly appreciate these conversations and being a part of this, man. Like, it's so, so dope, man. So I want to thank you. And I want to thank everybody that's been viewing, man. I've been looking at the comments, seeing the feedback, man. People are really enjoying these conversations so i'm glad that uh the the viewers and the watchers are enjoying that um so as all man i'm part of the geek set podcast only podcast that blend hip-hop culture and geek culture together and right now our focus is the black geek documentary um we've been fortunate enough to be interviewed by forbes magazine to talk about blurred culture Mm -hmm. and so that came out and within that we we announced that we are crowdsourcing a documentary um and with the documentary it's literally a we're going to timeline being a black geek we're going to talk about our heroes from the past and and how it felt when we saw black geek stuff as a kid and then also talk about the movers and shakers of today like the people that are pushing the culture and also talk about the future and what's really dope about it is a lot of the people that i that we've interviewed has been down to be on-screen talent um so for us to interview and talk about their path and their journey so i'm excited about it because with geek set and our history of the blurred culture and the support from the blurred culture and then our director brandon champ robinson man shout out to him who and his history with filmmaking and everything um i feel like we have all the tools needed to make a good documentary we've been calling it a love letter to the blurred culture because it's a blurred documentary created by blurs uh for the blurred uh, c- uh community and we want to make sure that we don't cut any corners. So we don't want to do like the interviews via Zoom. We're going to do everything in person. So right now it's all hands on deck on just getting um, getting the word out that about the Black Geek documentary. So I've been telling everybody like we have a GoFundMe that we've been using for it. Like if you are fortunate enough to to donate towards the documentary, go ahead. But just as important as donating is the comments when you see the post, is retweeting, is liking, is everything that's involved with just getting that word out about the Black Geek documentary because I'm super excited about that. So that's been our our focus and our push. You can go to geeksetpodcast.com or at geeksetpodcast um, on any social media. You can find me at young underscore deuces as well. I'll have all that information. Um, You'll see posts, you'll see it in our bios, but the Black Geek documentary has been our our big push and our focus. And I'm just excited about this journey because this is like our first big project since we've been creators since doing this. And I'm excited to see where this goes and how it comes and how it comes out and how the world receives it. Man, I'm definitely uh, behind you 100%. Love what Geek Set is doing. you got to speed this shit up in the future. God damn. Oh, man. I knew I knew I knew I'll be, I'm like, fuck. These are like 20 seconds or less. This thing gave us. This is a YouTube video. Uh, and D.I., you ain't shit because I saw you looking for what I said. We were looking for more of a, hey, guys, my name is Geek Set. Hey, listen. Hey, you can I'll find me at. 
<laughs> I gotta take I gotta take every opportunity I can. <laughs> and nobody was gonna say anything, so I looked like the asshole of a nigga. I was like, God damn. I'm the I'm the least sad. I was like, okay. It's, it's, a not, yeah. it's a documentary, so I get it. But if you started telling <laughs> other shit to go follow, so well, you know, let me tell y'all as a kid, music man, grow, real quick. growing up in Milwaukee, man, like, like I gotta tell y'all. Like, <laughs> And then in high school, it was crazy for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nigga, the only thing I was going to say was at CT is dope on everything. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I'm the least known here, so I got to least, I got to have my moment. <laughs> oh, man. I, I get it, man. <laughs> DR, what's up, man? At CT on everything. Man. <laughs> hey, just follow me at TI. Like, Listen. If you think I'm bullshit, Will, the next time we do this shit, Geek Set goes last, bro. Me and Dion go first. You gonna sign off? God. <laughs> All right, next, time, next time, I'm saying two words. I'm like, I'm doing I'm doing Let that shit start fading into the intro. I'm gonna just start doing the intro. I'm gonna play the wrap-up music on me? Yeah. 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 You gonna play the wrap-up music on me? Oh, man. I am a lover of people. Oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> this is straight out of the comic book. Make sure that you check us out every Friday. Coming up next, <laughs> you go. You go play like the credits at the uh, at the end of a Marvel movie. It's gonna be the Easter egg credit. <laughs> Wait to the end. You gonna, you gonna mess around and be the Easter egg too? Oh no, I wasn't. <laughs> thought, be the so Easter you egg thought I was finished too. talking. What would have been hilarious is if, like, as I was going, like everybody's screens just start going off one by one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even Will. <laughs> keep like, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I ended the meeting. I don't even know how you still up there. And I'm you know what's funny, you. bro? And of course, it's all the jest, bro. But this has been me since I was a kid. I'll be in church and hear my fuckers give testimonies in church and be like, God damn. <laughs> Yo, every time when the pastor getting ready to end and he start thinking, he said, I want to thank him. Back. <sighs> I want to thank Sister Johnson. But like, yo, if you don't wrap up these things, uh, bro, we've been here three hours. Here's the worst thing, bro, because my wife, Dan Doreen, we was on this radio show together and she would have these long exits because they would be like, yo, what you got coming up? And fortunately for her, she always had a lot coming up. So she would say this shit and I would be after her and I would just be like, follow me on MySpace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it would be annoying because it's like, yo, if I say something, what if there's one person that says this? I, I actually like hearing everything. You'd be like, okay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually want to know about it now. Yeah, then I'm not. Please, please elaborate on that a little bit more. Oh, 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 oh. I'm glad you had. Oh. Can I share my screen? I want to show you the first 10 minutes of it. I got a PowerPoint. <laughs> Give you the first 15 minutes and a rundown with commentary. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Like I said, this is on every week, Saturday. Y'all can sit with us in the morning, hear some good old comic book talk especially from like i said these jack of all trades and for those that don't know every time you hear that people i know people know the phrase of a jack of all trades is a master of none but there's another part to that people never say and i always want to say it whenever i do mention somebody being a jack of all trades a jack of all trades is a master of none but always better than a master of one so always remember that and i want to thank y'all for joining me and we will catch y'all next time I've been doing hella fucking drugs.